Remember, we are, of course, live with the internet phone in. We're live on YouTube, we're live on Twitch, we're live on Facebook, and we're live on LinkedIn Live. How amazing is that? Welcome, welcome, welcome. We've just started on TikTok as well. So the TikTokers are joining us. Dinky you do. Absolutely lovely to have you with us. Diane, wonderful stuff. Now, tonight, so much to talk about. So little time to do it in. Off we shall go to the telephones as soon as possible and see what is happening. So there you go. Lots and lots of reaction. And lots of your calls coming in already. I cannot believe it. Just incredible. Welcome, welcome, I say, to the telephones as quickly as you like. Here we go. Hello. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Hello. Thank you, do. How are you, son? Martin? Hello, Martin. Well done. You got on first tonight. Yes, correct. That, oh, you've great. beaten Kareem and you've beaten Glenn. That's well done. Hello, pals. This is Thomas Hamilton. Think you do on the TikTok. Welcome, welcome, you, Martin. Son? Very well, son. How are you, son? Very well. I have. You have um, a good day. Glenn, I've just found out the bus is having on straight from the 1st of November to the until further notice but we are not happy about it and that's something we need to talk about the buses why are they going on strike well why maybe they, they need to go on strike martin you know if they're looking for a better deal for higher wages that sort of thing i know but but i don't i don't find that amusing me it's really I well no it's not it's not but listen no strike is meant to be amusing it's got to hit hard so that the government think right we really do need to sort this out i know but I blame stagecoach and I blame... No, no, you can't mention companies like that, Martin. I'm sorry, you'll need to go. There we are. We don't blame any companies at all. Right, uh, now we're talking to... Uh, hello, you're live with Scottish phone in. Who's that? Hello? No, nobody. Right. Guys, remember, if you're coming on, of course, we don't mention second names. We don't mention names of individuals or you'll get a lifetime ban. And we don't mention companies. Yes, we sorted it out there with Martin. So he'll have an idea now. There we go. Fantastic stuff. Right. Back to that, I see. Now, who have we got here? Let's just check the chat. Oh, there we are. Kareem must be in the bath, says Numpty Heat. Wait till we see who this is. You're live with Scotty's phone in, Dinky Doo. Dinky Doo, Scotty's Kareem. How are we? Kareem, lovely to have you with us. Martin beat you on tonight. I know, and um, that's fine. Challenge accepted. Yes, but we had to <laughs> chase him there because he got it wrong. He mentioned a company. Ah, right. Uh, and we don't do that, as everybody knows, you know. Yeah, so there we go. Yeah. But he'll get the hang of it. I don't think there's any malice in it, if you know what I mean. Yes, no, he was just being passionate what he was talking about he was being passionate off. yes indeed so there we are so it's my job to cut him off if he oversteps the mark correct i'm sure he'll phone back later with oh i've absolutely no doubt now how are you i'm not too bad scotty not too bad um i was having a wee think today about two things to to speak about it's not really political because i know someone criticized me last night saying i'm always political we think ah don't you listen to any criticisms kareem because these people don't understand it they may have heard you once i think that was murray actually murray's okay he's a, he's one of the good guys but he said no politics but he wasn't uh indicating whether it was politics with a small p or a large p you know yes well that's fair enough that's fine yeah um well, the first thing was, I did mention this briefly the other day, I think it was in a post, but I've read today, which is, I think it's great, one of the major supermarkets, which we will not name, uh, is now not selling fireworks. Ah, excellent. Yes, now I did hear that, Karim. It would be nice to think it's a direct result of the internet phone-in. Ah, well, you know, we spoke about it and boom, there we go. Yes, you <laughs> never, ever know who's listening. I mean, it's incredible. Here's a guy called, wait till you hear this, Kareem. Here's a guy on a TikTok. He's called Franco Beg, and he says, Kareem needs to find another hobby rather than call every single night. Now, I think there's a problem there with Franco Beg, don't you? Yes. What is that's Franco that's... Beg's problem? Do you know what I mean? Has he called? I doubt well, it. I was going to say that. Yes. yes. 
So then, come on, Franco Beg, you need to come on and explain yourself big time. Absolutely. I'll be interested to hear. Yeah, well, we flung down the gauntlet, Karim. <laughs> so, but the, 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 that supermarket's not going to sell them, and I know some other of the big chains uh -huh. are now starting to sell the fireworks, but they are not noisy. They're, they're, they're the quiet ones. Silent so fireworks. I mean, silent yeah. whizzers, yes, absolutely. So I suppose it's a step in the right direction. Well, as I say, in Manchester, I mean, I've fortunately never been in that kind of uh, terrific war zone, but I've heard all about it from people. And, um, you know, I mean, thank goodness, thank goodness yes. that we haven't yes. been there. But it was a dreadful feeling. And as I say, the yeah. dog who was in the house was terrified. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking about, obviously, animals. The yes. elderly, if you, if you think of people that have autism and don't understand what's going on, yes. you know, with light. People who are sensory and they can feel something happening, but they don't know what it is. Might be an earthquake. Yeah. yeah. Well, my two were terrified earlier on, Scotty. I came home, had a, a wee lie down because I had a knack, really tiring day at work. Um, and then there was like a massive explosion. It was obviously uh, thunder. Oh, yes. Uh, now I have that. Now don't tell me. I think we're talking about five o'clock. Yes, around about that time. And I thought it was somebody moving one of these, you know, these great big bins. So uh, the first yeah. time I heard it, it was quite distant, you know, these kind of big skips on wheels. And I thought it was somebody moving one of them. And yes. then the second time I thought, what is that? And I looked out and I thought, that's thunder. Yes, yeah, nice. it's, it was Really, really loud. It's been well, it's monsoon, it's monsoon like weather today. Today was roasting. Uh -huh. It was quite warm, very wet at times. I think it's to be wet all week, and that comes back to the fireworks, Scotty, that I'm not really, well, where I am, I'm not hearing much of it, obviously because of the weather probably, but that might have an effect, obviously, next week if it's going to be drier with a lot of the, the kids and the young ones out. and Sure, fire them absolutely. Up. Another thing I don't like is when people light bonfires and then they get out of control and the fire brigade go to put them out and get abuse. Yeah, yeah. this is time of the year for them, I think, isn't it? You know, well, it's just uh, bad news. I mean, I've even been to an organized display, you know, and a, a rocket took off the wrong way. I mean, fortunately, nobody was hurt. I said to a gentleman, are you okay? He said, I just caught the side of my leg there, you know. But oh. they, they are dangerous things. Oh, they are. But my second point, Scotty, we've spoken this briefly, but it's more to do with probably some of the, the listeners uh, will probably comment more on this one. The listeners and, and well. the viewers, Karim. Let's have it straight. Yes. The TikTokers. Last year, there was um, people were complaining about a Christmas song. Um, and they've changed the lyrics. Now, I won't go into the whole song, but the, the singer sang, you, you cheap, lousy faggot. Oh, yes. It was that, that song, and it's a, it's a classic Christmas song. I won't name the name of the song. But no, I'm sure no we, 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 we know the song, absolutely. In fact, yes. you can name it, yes, Fairy Tale in New York. Correct, yes. A, an absolute classic song. But last year, because so many people, well, a lot of people complained, or I don't know who complained, but the big companies thought we need to change this. They did change it. We'll probably see the change a lot more this year compared to last year when they just changed it at Christmas time. Well, but you see, that... I don't know that that should happen, and I'll tell you for why. Because mm -hmm. a faggot is a piece of beef. It's like a mince patty. It's like mm -hmm. a meatball. Yes. You see? Yes. And that's what it is. So, you know, somebody obviously has abused the word at some point and people uh -huh. then take that word as to mean that now i don't yes. think because somebody's abused the word we should be changing the words yep it's, it's history otherwise you'll end up with nothing that. in the language yeah how many people have sang that every single year how many people with the memories of that that's song the and song and don't change it a bit like historical revisionism if you take yeah. down all the statues for slavery, generations yeah. will not realize there ever was slavery. Yeah, you're rewriting history. You're just, you know. Historical uh, revisionism, Karim. And it's wrong. Yeah. yeah. Leave I things, leave things as they are. Don't interfere. I'll tell you a lovely story. 
Do you remember yeah. the James Herriot books? Yes. Yes, yeah. All Creatures Great and Small. James Herriot started off, I think he, he was a vet in Edinburgh. He qualified right. in Edinburgh, probably at the, at the Dick School. And, um, I mean, I would need to check that. But when he was a youngster, he was always fascinated by animals. And the Coleman's horse was parked, waiting patiently at the side of the road while the Coleman was offloading coal. Uh -huh. So, James Herry, I don't know if you're getting flashing going on on the internet at the moment, but that'll be the thunder. Anyway, yeah, um, yeah you just might be a bit unstable for a bit. Anyway. As a wee boy, he went up and he patted the Coleman's horse. Now, the Coleman's horse was obviously a working beast and was used to working for the Coleman. The Coleman's horse picked him up with the seat of the pants and had him in his mouth. Right. Right, and he's shouting, ah, help, help, and he's getting yeah. shaken a bit by this big horse, big Clydesdale horse or whatever. Anyway, the poor Coleman came running out from where he'd been delivered and grabbed him and rescued him and put him down and says, are you all right, Sonny? You know, and he goes, I, I, I just got a fright. And the Coleman said to him, son, dinna ever meddle with things your dinner can oneth na boot. Uh -huh. In other yeah. words, don't touch something that you know nothing about. Yeah. And I yeah. think with these people that are trying to, trying to invade our world thinking, making it what they think might be, politically correct, shouldn't yeah. meddle with things they know nothing about. Yeah, yeah. There's right. no way that any of these people that are mucking about with our language will have a deep knowledge of all the historical background to what they're playing with. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? Totally different times as well. You know, totally uh, different times. And people regulate themselves, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a law for everything. It's yeah. a bit like, um, have you ever heard the concept of um, <clears throat> sign pollution? <clears throat> yeah, too many signs. Too many signs all over the place. You yeah. know, school 25 when lights flash, slow down, humps in the road, low flying yeah. aircraft, uh, this way to the nearest attraction, watch, yeah. uh, you know, beware, slippy pavement ice in the winter, all that stuff. And eventually people get sign pollution and they yeah. can't think for themselves. Yeah, yeah. You know, so we, we need to be careful. Even these signs in the motorway, giving you good advice, you know, um, uh -huh. tiredness can kill, take a break, you know, that sort of idea. Um, yeah. But people know what they're doing. And if we get nannied like that, we'll think, excuse me, what was I to do next? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's like that in education. You, the old style, as you'll know, Scotty, is the teacher would stand and just tell the class everything mm -hmm. and they would write stuff down. But the new style now is about cognitive uh, elements where they're having to think, problem solve and make decisions, mm -hmm. critically analyse. And that's exactly when you leave school and then it comes to being told what to do it's like a, a contradiction isn't it yes yes a contradiction in terms from these styles because an apprenticeship when i served an apprenticeship i went into banking when i left school and it was really an extension of school the manager was the hidey and the accountant was the deputy yeah. you know and i can remember i had to change my handwriting because i'm left-handed kareem and I used to oh, write right. in a kind of backhanded <laughs> style. I now write right-handed copper plate with my left hand. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. And uh, that was because the accountant said to me, uh, we used to fill in people's books, their accounts, so they got them back with the taking five pounds out. So oh. under the withdrawal, I would write five pounds. Yeah. And he looked at stuff. Yeah. He said, you need to sort out your handwriting, boy. You know, and that's how they spoke to you. And for a ten or a week, we had a blue suit and our hair cut, white shirt, looking smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They used to change that in the schools, didn't they? Um, that if you they said it was the, the left hand was the devil's hand. Well, yeah. left hand, yes, you've got dexter is your right hand. So you sit at the right hand of God. You're dexterous. Yeah. If you're right left-handed, it's your sinister hand. 
And that's what they did with poor wee King George the Sixth, the Queen's father. They tried to correct him, and he ended up with a dreadful stutter. Yeah, yeah. Because he was a nervous wee boy anyway, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's to do with the different parts of the brain and how it works. Yes. Well, Scotty, that's, that's really the two points I wanted to make tonight. That is fantastic. I shall put this to many nations, and we'll see yeah. what happens. Listen, thank you, Doon. Speak tomorrow, Scott. Lovely hearing you, Dinky Doo, Kareem. All the best, <laughs> lad. There we are. What a top man. That's our Kareem Dinky Doo, I say. To the telephones as quickly as possible. Now then, what have we got here? Wow. Some chat. You're all having a wee chat amongst yourselves. And on the TikTok, fantastic stuff on the TikTok, Dinky Doo. Uh, hello, Scotty. Hello. How are we? Hi, everybody. Hi, D. D, thank you again. I need to talk to you. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Hello, Scotty. It's Martin. Uh, I apologize. No, not at all, Martin. I know there was no malice in that. I know. But we're not a knocking shop. You didn't say anything, uh, you know, too wrong. You just mentioned companies. And we don't do that because everybody's got opinions. And you know that they are a fantastic company. Yes. You see, so that's that. So, but you'll know in the future, Martin. It takes a wee while to get into these things. Uh -huh. How's your um, apart from that? How's your how's your day been? Here's somebody saying James Herriot was a Yorkshireman. I think James Herriot was a Scot from Edinburgh. His name was uh, Alf White. So I think somebody needs to do the research. Uh, my day was outstanding today, Martin. Yes, um, I was in busy with my dogs today. I was in. What what kind of dogs have you got, Martin? I've got a cockatoo cross. Lovely. I've got a chihuahua cross and I got a Maltese cross. Wow, you're some man, I'll tell you. I know. Hi, Scotty. Hi, how are you getting on? I'm good. Are you? Yeah, we're great. Dinky, do are you enjoying the fun in? Fantastic stuff. It's good stuff. So, um, what are you up to tomorrow? Nothing much. Just the work as normal, I right? Work as normal, Martin. And maybe the odd wee funny for you early in the morning up on the internet. What am I on tomorrow? Uh, what time? Uh, no, I'll be back on 9 o'clock, Martin. Okay. The morning phone-in, sadly, are finished now because obviously I work. Uh-huh. You see? How are the subscribers doing? How are they? The, um, the YouTube, um, YouTube subscribers. Oh, doing? we need Why? to get more. We need to get more, Martin. You see, sometimes there's a lot of people subscribed years ago and they're going, oh, I don't understand what's going on here. They'll be getting messages during the night when we post things. So sometimes okay. you lose five and sometimes you gain ten. Mm -hmm. So tonight we need to gain ten subscribers on YouTube. Every night I watch your videos, every night all of your different videos you, you've made were really, really good. Did you see the wee funny one we made about getting married? Yes, I did. did very, you, very funny on that eye. Did you get a <laughs> smile? Yes, 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 I did, mate. <laughs> Martin, I'm so, going to dash off. Lovely to hear you and well done. Yes, so hopefully I'll, hopefully can, I'll talk to you tomorrow night as normal, but I'll, but I'll start and then... Um, Listen to you for the night and that. You are a top man in regards to your good lady and the dogs. Nice. I think you do. That's our Martin to the telephone. You're live at Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Hello, Scotty. It's Dee. Oh, Dee. I need Hi. to speak to you, my darling. Dee, I am so humbled. I got a message today from GoFundMe.com forward slash Scotty Ivan McClure. Okay. And some very, very, very generous benefactor had put a massive amount in the account. Oh, no. Oh! It's, in, it's worth every penny. Oh, you are so kind. That is so lovely because that goes towards the new piece of equipment. Of course it is. We need to keep it growing. And we need to keep it going. growing. And, and, you know, when we outgrow something, we'll say, we'll buy another piece. That's it. But That's I that. just, D, I I just love, I'm like you, I'm just buzzing because we are actually on. Oh, definitely. That's, definitely. that's the big one, yeah. do you know what I mean? And the rest is trimmings. Okay, it doesn't look like some highly, highly polished, 
uh, show that you'd get on the telly. That. You know, don't need that though. As, lo as long as we can talk equipment. and discuss. We can see each other, we can yes. hear each other, that's it. That's all we need. Because the greatest <laughs> assets on this phone are not actually the equipment, it's the people. Of course, it's the, pe the people. That They're solid gold. And D, thank you so much. I am much no humbled. No problem at all. Oh. Listen, I wanted to make a wee point. Um, and it was to it was Anne that phoned it there. Well, yes, night. just before you right. do that, now, a little bit yeah. of housekeeping here, a little bit of background info, a bit of gen up for you. Um, yeah. What we got, uh, oh, yes, oh, just to finish the GoFundMe thing, we're very nearly at 50% of target. I noticed, yeah. Oh, yeah, so we're just, because really I looked at it the other night, I said, wouldn't it be wonderful to have half half the money raised? Because you get the doubting no, Thomas, he's laughing, you they go, ha, 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 I see you are trying to raise some money on the internet, ha, 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 <laughs> he's bothered. You know, and exactly. now they're going, oh, wait a wee minute, he's halfway there. If I would have you would just put a pound in. A pound? How quick would that be? Do you, you know, know what I mean? And absolutely, a pound. If, 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 if 1250 yeah. people put in a quid, yeah, oh, exactly. you know, but I some of you, care, some of I you have put in. I mean, we were looking for a hundred angels D at seven pounds fifty uh, to yeah. get us up the next bit. Now, uh, I mean, that doesn't take us quite to target, but you know, you can do the math, you know that. But seven pounds fifty, and some people like your good self, five, ten, fifteen angels just at one fell swoop. Definitely. And it's the Definitely. kindness that I love. It's the beautiful people that are going, no, 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 no. I'll give the man something. Well, we appreciate you. The ones that appreciate you should be doing it. Hi, it'll, it will get there yeah. and we'll, we'll get sorted. I just know. Of course. You know, course. the YouTube channel is going to be a challenge, but we will do it. I mean, my wee married thing at 15 seconds. Yeah. 300 have seen it. Then I looked yeah. on the Facebook page, 3,000 have seen it. I know. It's maybe the different, like you said, maybe America, different places, and I've seen the video at different times. TikTok yeah. is absolutely fantastic because obviously it's TikTok up there. Now put your is, call up, by the way. Yeah, TikTok is just, I had to actually cancel my TikTok. I can't keep up with it. I, um, just so much I happening. <laughs> so no, you're not too old for it at all. There's just so much happening. It's wonderful. But uh, it's, it's good for yourself. It's good if you you know for people like yourself presenters. Um, I was actually of, I was directing um, a, a wee play one day, and there was a couple of uh, uh, young ladies in the play, and I said, "Now, girls, I need you to go and practice a wee dance routine here." Right, yeah. I said, so away the two of you go and make up a dance. I said, now, I don't just want the kind of dance you'll do on TikTok. And one of them looks at me and goes, do you actually know what that is? I said, oh, I think you'll find out I do. <laughs> it was just wonderful. Do you know what I mean? I know, definitely. And TikTok, D, again, I'm very humbled by the people. I mean, we used to get some fabulous people on the phone ends. Let's not kid ourselves. But we also got a real few numpty heats. We got a few I drunks. Know, sometimes a numpty heat really made it as well. Oh, they were good as well because we could send them <laughs> down the swanny. We did get a good laugh, but... Um, yeah, I don't know what you mean. You and you know, on a Friday night, the first dozen of them were all steamboats and... I know. Give it a I know. Sky, Sky, let me talk, Sky, give it a wee chance. And, you know, and you thought, know. come back yeah. on when you're sober, you know. <laughs> Get to your bed. Get to um, your bed, the lot of you. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, that was going out to two and a half million. You think know, that's big know. until you go down to where we were in the northwest, the northeast, the midlands. Yeah. You're then into something like nine, ten million, you know. Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Just huge, it. huge radio stations, I know. you know. I know. And it's very, very strange because when I'm phoning somebody, if it's a commercial call about something, I'll never uh, ever assume they know me because that's bad news. If you say, "Excuse me, uh, you'll know me, yeah. Scotty McClure," they go, "Sorry, I've never heard of you." Then <laughs> you you don't look so sharp. You know what I mean? Whether they have or not. I so I always start the call with, now, I don't know if the name will, will ring a bell with you. Scotty McClure. And very often the answer is Scotty McClure from the radio. Oh, 
<laughs> of course I know who you are. You know, all that stuff. stuff. Is it you? Is, it, is this a wind up? You know, so you always get that. You say, no, no, no. I once phoned a BBC national station to talk to the programmer about a genuine professional thing. And the, the, the phone got put down in me. It goes, <laughs> the phone got put down in me, right? It, it goes like this. It goes, this is a wind up slam. Because he thought he was going to wind up. Hello, is that the BBC? You're live on Scribe a you know? <laughs> so that and I phoned oh. back. I says, "Look, can you can somebody get a hold of him?" I said, "I'm his secretary." I said, "Well, can you tell him it is me? It's not a wind yeah. up. I would like it's a word." <laughs> <laughs> you just need to hear your voice, and you know it's not a wind up. <laughs> and I remember meeting somebody very senior from the BBC at dinner, and I said, "So lovely to meet you. You'll not know me." And he shook my hand very warmly. Went, "Dinky do." Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was lovely, oh, you know. That's great. That's great. But so now, so that's the housekeeping, and thank you for that. No problem. And Can for all your point? enthusiasm. No problem at all. Now then. Can I make a quick point? Oh, you I must. Know? That's why you came on. I did, and you spoke all the way through that. You'll so. be good off going, <laughs> I couldn't get a word in with him. It, it, and I did get pulled up for it. I got pulled up for it the other night. A, a top lady pulled me up and said, see that call with Dee? That was just outstanding. But can I say something? Oh, Let yes. her talk. I said, oh, sorry, I will, I will. <laughs> well, right. I'll keep it, I'll keep it uh, short. No, keep it long. I'm going to shut it now. Keep it long. Right, okay. <laughs> um, so, so it was Anne, I'm sure it was Anne. Uh-huh. Um, a lovely woman and she's actually she was actually in the same sort of a circumstances as myself i have four children my oldest is my oldest daughter is 40, uh, 40. my oldest daughter is, daughter is 26 um and i've got a son at 24 i got a little 16 and a, a boy at 14. um i work i've worked hard um mostly all my life all my days but my health hasn't been too good so i'm in the house with the kids well, we can't really call them kids, teenagers, um, blah, blah, blah. But my daughter, she's um, she went to St Andrews University mm -hmm. just before COVID. It was a face-to-face -face interview and she got in. But because of the COVID and everything, um, job wise, she says, Mum, she got a few places and she says, I'm, I'm going to go to Stirling. Mm -hmm. um, no, Stirling, sorry. Strathclyde University. Strathclyde, Strathclyde is a so fabulous, a, fabulous university. Uh, St Andrews yeah, is obviously so very wonderful as well and very picturesque. Yeah, absolutely. So she's doing um, psychology there. But anyway, my main point is um, when, I, when I spoke the other night, it wasn't to um, bring mothers down that work. No. Because I've done it myself. My, my call was about my, my perfect view of life in general um the 1930s 40s and 50s it was a more some sim simplistic time where you could give a kid a, a, a piece of chalk they would draw what would you call that hopscotch yes and they would be there for, for two hours Piva. um yep exactly um and it's just the simplicity of the times that are that, that that really appeal to me um so that's why i said you know yeah but women been in the house and, and the men been out and gents it's not the same nowadays um sorry i'm drinking water um you're quite right i might have a wee sip myself <laughs> um it's not it's not the same nowadays i mean back then gentlemen were gentlemen which i love i love all that sort of a yes era. Um, well, I still open yeah. the door for ladies and open the car Absolutely. door for ladies, the passenger Absolutely. door, you know, all yeah. that stuff. I'm talking about when we're getting really into the into car. That, that's the kind of stuff I'm really, really into. I'm a really old-fashioned person. Um, so, I, so if I'm listening, <laughs> it's just to say um, I certainly didn't mean to... No, you don't need to ever justify yourself. You were talking... Um, with a good open heart and making yep. complete sense. Because the truth is, a lot of the career women would rather be in the house with the wains. Yeah, 
Well, I think I think so. And we're in a different generation. I mean, the kids nowadays, um, the mothers and fathers are out working their backsides off to get them the latest PlayStation or... Um, you know, but also the what they're doing. See, when you were playing yeah, in the street game. Well. Yes, but what they're doing, they've got a new love, if you like. So they're not listening to their parents and sometimes yeah. they're not listening to their teachers because the they're phone. on their phone. Exactly. This is another thing that bugs me, absolutely bugs the life out of me, is phones in classrooms. Um, I don't... That's another story we'll go into another time, I think. No, but um, I think I there's going to have to be... Like Kareem that. said an interesting thing. He's a teacher and he said yeah. that, you know, you'll never now get the phones out of schools because yep. they're 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 part of it and we need to find a way to use them well and wisely but um you know you're 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 still going to find i think that education will suffer and i think the parents have to come down heavily on the side of the school they do, they do. They definitely do. you know it's a big the ask governments, the, the governments have got a lot to do with this as well i mean look at i mean you can't not this smacking but this is another thing that we see i'm not this smacking children as um, I, don't, I don't condone it, um, but there is no children have no respect or no manners um, these days. It's very very rare, I think, to see a nice, respectful, well mannered child. It makes such a difference. Yeah, you know, I remember um, being in a bookshop in Manchester one Sunday afternoon, and there was a husband and a wife and a, a big son. So you had a nice, smart boy, nice husband there, and the wife looked very pleasant. Then she turned and spoke to the child, and then she said to the child, don't be so challenging. And I thought, yeah. what an advanced parent. Don't Absolutely. be so challenging. We'd have got a thump. Suddenly she turned <laughs> round D and slapped him full in the face. I know. And the whole shop saw it, and the father didn't know where to put himself because everybody turned around the shop and went, "Oh, there's no need for that," and started you know, parenting. Oh, geez, that, that's so funny because it puts me in mind when I was young, and you remember that the pick picking mix used to be all at the front of the, you know, the, the shop you were in. Aye. You would get maybe a wee a bag with take you no know, a wee mixture. Yes. So I remember standing in the queue. I was only young. I was about maybe six or something and I remember taking a couple and eating them before I, I got to the actual yeah. test and it wasn't actually nobody seen me apart from um, one of the customers and I remember I got outside and I actually got a slap in the lug oh. and I was, I was mortified <sighs> and, and I thought you know what I'm not going to say anything to my mum or dad because they would have gave me a thumping well that's it place. that's <laughs> it and in fact the teachers <laughs> used to give you a slap if you cheeked up I know, I know, I know. You know, and, and I, know. I, I remember telling some youngsters this, what it was like when I was in school, and they said, you should just, uh, but I'd just batter them. I said, listen, these guys were commandos from the war. <laughs> they were huge big guys, and they would get you and give your head a good shake oh. with the hair, you know, and say, behave yourself. Yeah. Oh, remember yeah. they used to say that? You said, away out my sight. Yeah, yeah, I've not experienced that right enough. I've had a, a book thrown at me. Oh, gosh. Um, but I think that was that. <laughs> I think I, they that used to, there's always one sort of oversteps the mark and the teachers used to go daft. And I remember yeah. one guy, I was talking to a guy one time and he said when he was in school, the teacher uh, got him by the hair, bumped his head off the board and said, Ohm's Law, boy, Ohm's Law, and repeated it. He says, I didn't think much of his punishment, he says, but I do remember Ohm's Law. Yeah, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's crazy when you look back and everything, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's different. Now it's all feather bed, bed stuff, you know what I mean? Changed. Yeah, it's all feather bedded, everything. Oh, are you all right? And, you know. Oh, if it, the kids are wrapped in cotton wool nowadays and, um, you know, uh, and I'll tell you something generation. else, probably all that lockdown stuff didn't really help them, you know what I mean? It hasn't, it hasn't. I'll you know, because they weren't getting little the little discipline, little. you know? Yeah, my 16 year old daughter sort of uh, suffered quite a wee bit um, through the lockdown. She loves school, she's, 
she actually used to cry when it was summer holiday. She didn't oh, know what to do. Know, she loved the school. So, a lot of this, I mean, the school is a, is a nice place to be for so many youngsters. It is, it is. You know? um, you, just get your, you get your munchies in every school and you've just got to, as I say to the kids, just thrive and thrive and, and try and get good marks because what you'll be doing is leaving all the munchies behind you. That's it. Get your marks and get on. Don't waste your time. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's numpties yeah, in all right. walks of life. There's even numpties. Come on, Scotty McClue's fun ins. <laughs> well, listen, Scotty, I'm going to go and I'll let a numpty get on now. Well, Bye. listen, my darling, yeah. it's been so good to hear you again. Thank you, you from the bottom of my heart. But we love no your stuff. Problem. And you just no need problem. to tell me to shut up in future because <laughs> the people want to hear you. <laughs> Can I get a minute, Scotty? Can you shush just now and let me speak? I just let me speak the rest of it. And as I say, I got pulled up. We're straight talkers, Scotty. We're straight talkers. We love it. But yeah. that's the quality of the program because everybody know. knows where they stand. Yeah, absolutely. And I absolutely. love that. And I think you yeah. are just amazing. And thank you. I've, I've, I've uploaded your call the other night. I know I noticed that. I noticed that. Did you I spot that? Much. I thought that the world needs to hear this. Oh, so a quick um, sorry to Anne if she felt that I was, um, you know, if I offended her in any way. Not at all. I want just to, just to um, let her know that I've been there and seen it and done it as well. I worked very hard. Um, it's just my wee, um, what do you call it? A wee, a wee idea for a perfect world. It is, it is. It's my wee perfect world that I would love to, to be in. A wee simple world and um, with the children and so on. So it's not it. too much to ask. Mm -mm. And a jilly piece. Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. Yep, that's it. <laughs> well, listen, you take care. Okay. And you, Angel, thanks again. And dinky do. Okay. Thank you, dear. Thank you, dear. Thanks very, very bye much, Dee. Bye bye. No there we are. Bye That's bye our Dee. What a super lady. To the telephones, guys. Evening, everybody. Lovely to have you with us in the chat. Uh, Sky, you're late. Numpty Heed, I think you need to get your clocks into a horologist. Oh, that's got you. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Hi, it's Dee from Oakley. How are you? Dave from Ilkley. How are you? How lovely to hear you from Ilkley Moor. Are you are you on the Moor Bat Hat? Uh, just on the just off the Kilncalf. What a lovely! I went over to Ilkley one day, Dave, and what a beautiful drive over from Lancashire. Yep, yep. And I remember looking right. down. I would. I was looking down, seeing the canal. Would that be right? That's right, yeah, yeah. Aye, that's it. Lovely. You, you, didn't, you, didn't you say you got your hat from Ilkley? Yes, I got, I got the, not this one, this is Hogs of Fife. But uh, I have I have many, many hats, as you know. And uh, one of them I, I bought brand new from a lovely outfitters in the middle of the town. Right. Yeah, with proper, like, varnish drawers and glass cases and the full bit. A gentleman's, a gentleman's outfitter, so you'll know which one I mean. I do, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I remember back in TFM. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic <laughs> stuff. Now then, what's our, here's a guy here, Dave. Scotty, your legend. Remember you back in the day, the original phone yeah. in king. Keep it up. And then he says, I thought you'd be about 210 years old by now. You sounded an old guy back in the Scott FM days. <laughs> right, anyway, I was listening to the guy earlier about the um, uh, fireworks. Fireworks, hi. Yeah, right. You might call me silly or stupid, I don't know. No, we won't. Uh, I want to ask no, we won't. It's, they're, they're on about, right, petrol and cars with pollution and stuff, yeah? Yeah. Um, they're getting rid of the cars. They're wanting rid of them by what, 2024 or something? Yeah, to, uh, 2025, right. is it? 25, yeah. So if they get rid of all that then, so what, what, how come fireworks with all the pollution stuff going off on that? What's going and on? what a mess. And who clears up afterwards all the burnt out rockets, the paper, the sticks, the sparklers, the metal, or the whole thing? Who clears all that up? Exactly. So, so you might call me and say, I'm just saying, like, 
if the pollution on that cars and stuff, why, why is the pollution on fireworks so well? Correct, correct. And they're also sending all that into the atmosphere. Yeah. No, so, I'm not calling you stupid yeah. at all. You're absolutely 100% correct. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's all in the end. And then the animals, like you said, you know, animals get scared. And, you know, yeah, and the animals, yeah. I mean, you're out in a beautiful part of Yorkshire. And, I mean, there are horses goats cows sheep the lot you know and if you've got a just they're going to be terrified am i not right in uh, in thinking there are sheep on the moor there is yeah yeah you see the lot when you look up you think there we go yeah well i'm just a bit confused you know with all the little but i'll ask you see see if uh I shall, Dave, I shall put this out not just to one nation, but to many nations. Yeah, please do. Top man, lovely to hear you, dinky do. Right, thank you. Ta-da-la. Uh, there we are, that's our Dave from Ilkley in Yorkshire, I, and he's up more, but at, you can't make that, I say. Right, who do we have here? You're live on Scotty's for in. Who's that? Hello? Mr. Nobody, that one, right? Who have we got here? Hello? Hello. Who's that? It's Danny. Danny, lovely to hear from you, mate. Dinky do. Dinky do. I think you're needing to extend your show, but one hour just isn't enough. It's not That's enough, enough Danny. I know, I know, but I do love the fact that everybody's finding out about it. We need to see an increase in the subscribers on the YouTube channel. Hours. Yeah. You need to in the future, maybe, but we'll see. We shall see. How are you tonight? I'm good. I'm, I'm here to report my findings. Aha. Uh -huh. You last week you sent me away to read the Macron report. You I remember? did, yes. A report from uh, uh, GEL Macron. That's, that's right, yeah. Yes. That one was, of the I finest, know. one of the finest economists in the world. Well, I, I, I read the report and it was a good report. And, you know, I, I, I agree you, what you said in the report. It, it all does kind of ring true what was, was said. It was written in 1975. 75, correct. And uh, then it was it, hidden for years and years and years by the British government from the Scots. And it explains Scotland's economic viability in terms of the kind of oil revenue and things like that. Yeah. However, I just think now it's kind of out of date. It's nigh on you know, kind of irrelevant. Well, uh, no, it's not actually point. irrelevant. I mean, that report now is 46 years old. Yeah. Yes, and a lot of things have changed. The oil industry and the gas industry have changed dramatically, but they've been replaced by renewable energies, by huge increases in, uh, in food and whiskey exports, by a lot of yeah. things having the Union flag on them when they've come from Scotland and should have the salt tire on them. So there's well, still a massive, massive economy. See, people will say, you've only got 5 million people. One person could be turning out millions of pounds. Then you've got the financial services industry. Yeah, I, I, heard, I heard you, and I think it was Kareem the other night, talking about the flags on the food in the supermarkets. And, yeah. and, you know, but I, I just don't think that's really you know waving flags just doesn't get no no it's not waving flags what it is is it's being credited with coming from the uk and the government for that is westminster when it's actually come from scotland therefore we're talking hard economic figures danny sorry but it's the same thing scotty it's the same thing if you buy a packet of strawberries that were picked in Scotland, they are from the UK. Yes, they are from the UK, but Scotland's not getting credited with the fact that they are from Scotland. Okay. Well, now, that's got... fine. Now, listen, Danny, let me just qualify that. That's fine because at the moment, Scotland is part of the UK. So that is absolutely fine. But I'm talking a commercial credit, accreditation, because... If Scotland were independent, then these strawberries would be being exported from Scotland to the rest of the UK and the rest of the world. And I'm sure in a situation where if Scotland were independent, that flag would be 
a saltire. Absolutely. Yeah, but can you see where I'm coming from? I'm not being nationalistic. I'm not even being nationalist. I'm purely into the economics of independence. Oh, well, that's good, because I've got some facts here for you, Scott, that I'm going to give you, and you can give me your opinion on them. Yeah, well, if you give me somebody else's opinion, which has been put down as fact, I'll give you the true figures. Oh, no, I've got the facts here, and I'm, I'm talking about germs. Yeah, well, you see, in actual fact, if you look closely at that, you'll probably see a figure which says amount unknown. Well, let's have a look at the top line figures, shall we? Scotland's budget deficit is at 36.3 billion. Right, which is about so. about 22% of GDP. Yeah, hold on a wee minute. Scotland doesn't have a deficit because it hasn't borrowed any money. But we spend more than we take in tax. That's what we mean no. by that. No, no, no. We give yeah. we give seventy five billion to Westminster. That's your top line. But the money that is spent on on Scotland is more than that Scotland takes. In tax. No, That's you're not. You're not listening. You're not listening. Seventy five billion coming from all of Scotland's assets. Yeah, all that kind of idea. Plus your taxes. That goes to Westminster. So Scotland is 75 billion down as a debit because that's gone as a credit to HM Treasury, okay? Then yeah, you start. Now, saying, that yeah. won't be mentioned in these figures. So, so but Scotland's budget deficit for 36 billion, then you're saying that's, that's a made up figure? No, what I'm saying is it'll probably be a true figure, but take the 36 billion away from 75 billion. Right, okay. Well, then what about the Barnett formula? You can the Barnett formula, we get well. 28 billion back. Right. Well, we get we get 2,000 pounds more per head. That doesn't matter. We get 28 so. billion back from sending 75 billion. So if I gave you 75 billion and you send me 28 back, then I am seriously well, in credit. Well, I'm not sure you, you're accurate with these figures. I'm not, where oh, no, 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 no. These figures. are the figures. I can tell you that right now. Well, where, where are they coming from? Tell me. They, that is How the far? actual figure that's sent down, and that's the actual figure that comes back. So they're coming from the Barnett formula. Yes, go and have a look at it. £46 billion, pounds, we are down. Well, which report am I looking at? You gave me the Macron report. You've got the Macron report, report on the oil. Yeah, that's nothing to do with the jazz, though. Right. So, right, so what you're your next your going to look share. at is the Barnett formula, what Scotland um, sends and what Scotland gets back. Yes, we get 30% higher than the rest. Okay. Yes, that's but that's right. fine oh. because we send another, what did I say to you? Uh, we send another 46 billion down there. So it doesn't matter what we get back. We're due back a lot more than that if we're sending well, if, all that money. If you can cite the, the website for that, then I'm sure me and the rest of the viewers will be interested to see that. Yeah, but remember, there's a lot of pressure from Westminster not to cite that because they want to stuff people's heads full of the fact that Scotland is heavily subsidised when in actual fact Westminster is heavily subsidised by Scotland. So don't well, bite the hand that the feeds facts, you. Scotty. Sorry? Give me the facts and I'll have a look at there, These are the facts. You check that out. But I also want to pick up on a point. I think it was Kareem again that said last year that, you know, uh, he says, oh, Danny must be reading unionist articles. I, I don't just read unionist articles. Good. I'm very pleased to hear article. that, Danny, because the more sources you can get, the better. Absolutely. I, I absolutely agree. Yes. Here's another Danny saying the Barnett formula is a farce, and based on false representation of income, this has been proven. Well, proof. Well, then show me the proof. I would. I want to see it. I'm asking. Well, it's all out there. I mean, you can actually do it just by popping it into a search engine and checking different sources. Well, that's what I've. That's how I've got my figures. You know. That I'm putting to you. But um, remember, I'm also talking to people. Some of them who know every single penny that's in Scotland. Well, yes, I'm, su I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. But listen, I'm going to go there now. But I'll leave you with this. Yes. Um, 
and Kareem's a teacher, isn't he? I, I think I heard you say. Uh, so I believe, I, yes. I, I, I'd, I'd like to know what Kareem's um, view is on the SMP's record on education for the past 10 years. I read an article today that there's so many hundred schools that haven't even been inspected since 2011. Well, um, you see, again, there may be a lot of anti nationalist propaganda out there. Well, I'm sure. Uh, you see, let's look at let's look at Westminster's record on it. Right. Right. And one of the worst one of the worst performing areas in education is East Berkshire. But I'm, I'm not interested in East Berkshire. I live in Scotland. Yeah, no, but I'm telling you about East Berkshire and all the rest of it. And that's like saying that the drugs are up. That's hardly the fault of the government. But, but, but that, this is, I mean, this is what nationalists tend to do. If we point out an error in Scotland, they seem to point down to England and say, well, no, no, no. All I'm there. saying, all I'm saying is you've got to look at how the world is going at the moment. So these, the, any problems, are, Scotland still has the world's top education system, no oh, doubt. I, I think that there's many that would dispute that. No, no, nobody can dispute it because it's a fact that that's what we've got. Well, it used to be. Uh, uh, no, it very, is. Very it very absolutely hard. is. And Scotland had four universities when England had two. But, yes, but I mean, today, uh, we're, we're, we're seeing that Scotland's education, unfortunately, is what it used to be. Well, no, nothing's what it used to be, Danny. Well, we can't just accept that. Sure. No, we can't, we can't just accept that. that. So they're working on that. it as best they possibly can. So whatever government of the day, they will have to carry the can for what's happening on their watch. Absolutely, and I totally agree. You know, and I mean, I'm up for that. I'm not, I'm not a political man at all. I'm not defending anything here. I'm just explaining. You could have fooled me. No, 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 not at all. I am not. I am absolutely 100% apolitical. But from an economic point of view, I think Scotland could do very well. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, under which particular government. Independence is much bigger than nationalism. But as long as we keep the Queen, you say. Very, very vital. Vital, because that's the first thing the unionists are going to say. Any threat to the Queen, so they'll remove 50% of the vote. If you say the Queen is 100% fine, she's our head of state, our sovereign lady, none of that will ever change. Her, she and her heirs and successors will reign in perpetuity. Well, I think that's kind of out of step with the nationalists. Well, it might be out of step with the nationalists, but the nationalists need to get their act together and acknowledge that, or independence will be toast. Yeah, yeah. It's very yeah, out anyway. of step with some of the nationalists, and I think it's pretty out of step with the Greens, but if they, if, if, if they start interfering with the monarchy, independence will be toast. Because in, well. in Scotland... The monarchy is a Scottish institution. The Scots took over the English crown in 1603. Mm -hmm, Scotland's yeah. monarchy goes back 2,437 years. Oh, there you go. So there you Absolutely. go. And, and, and anyway. you, know, you know, anybody that says otherwise needs to actually get a good look at that. So that doesn't change. Uh, anyway, I'm going to leave you with that. I'm sure Kareem's frantically diamond to get through, so I'll let you go. And Danny, a lovely call, lovely to hear you, and a good bit of quality argy bargy. Absolutely, we all love it. Thank you. Dinky doola. Good night. There we are. To the telephones as soon as we can. You're live in Scottish phone in. Who's that? Hiya. Hiya. Who's that? Hiya. It's uh, Mummy Paws. Mummy Paws. How lovely to hear you. Now, Scotty, listen, I looked on the Facebook page and it said that you were getting married. No, it there didn't. Was another thing, there was another thing that said a joke. Yes. I thought you were getting married for a minute there. No, who would have me? Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no. I, I put that down. Everyone's going, oh, congratulations, big man. So good. I hope I she's a queen and all that stuff. And I thought, wait, what's happening here? I've just put up a funny video about a pal of mine getting married. 
And it's just a wee joke, you know, it gave the registrar oh, £50. I was just about to put congratulations to you there as well. Yes, and, and a lot of my colleagues today were going, oh, you fooled us there. <laughs> I didn't set out to fool anybody. I just set out to put up a wee funny video. But I think instead I put up a, a, a picture. Yeah, you put up a picture of Aye, yourself. that's what's caused it. But anyway, I'm getting married. I'm getting married. No, it just says <laughs> getting married. I didn't say yeah. I'm getting married. <laughs> that was quite funny. It is a so hoot. I just to congratulate you. And do you know that 3,000 people have had a look at the page? Oh, really? Well, that's good. Yes. I got the figure in today. It says 3,000 have appreciated your post. And Daddy. What a laugh. <laughs> what a laugh. I've got, on, I've got on late tonight, but I was just, um, I was just listening to the guy talking about politics and stuff and i totally zone out he was about politics. I it, well so do i i mean i am a hundred percent apolitical but if somebody comes on with a point and the point's not right i will oh, correct totally. them yeah totally but yeah we can't yeah, we can't mummy pause we can't have people talking nonsense you know what i mean well i don't know you're in scotland uh, no, uh, talk uh, nonsense. yeah but <laughs> you've never you've <laughs> never ever heard any nonsense from scotty McClure. Not ever. Not ever, ever. <laughs> How good so is that? Fantastic. The phone in is 30 years old in June. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, 10, years, 10 years of an age difference for me then. Isn't that just amazing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 30 years of it. Everyone's going, see, when I first did the Sky Between Phone in, people said, oh, no, so, no, I mean, it's, it's very good. It's very funny. And that, but, I mean, it'll not last. They'll no last. Say, so, well, look, we've done 30 years just for starters. Were you talking about haggis tonight? No, somebody else is talking haggis. They've just said here, Jaffa Cake Feet on TikTok says, my granny used to catch haggis on our school holidays. Ah, right, okay. It's just a thought come up, but I've just came on really just... And somebody like, else says, ha ha, haggis, you can only catch it in winter. Well, I've got an interesting story about Haggis. Yes, go on. Was that um, I had told, well, it's interesting to me, it might not be interesting to everybody. Well, we'll find it. out. We'll be the judge of that. Just you tell it. <laughs> so I had told my kids about the Haggis. Uh -huh. And I had said to them about how it was a little creature and how it ran up the hill and it, it falls down because it's got three legs and, or something and one of them shorter than the other. And so we're talking about that. And uh, my son says to um, his sister, Dad, that that's, that's not real, that's not true. And she's like, yes, it is, because Mum told me it was. And then um, and then she got really, really upset with me and fell out with me for ages because she thought that she thought that haggis were real. And then that's as hard to find them out that it was actually a story. The wee sour, it was just a wee story. Oh, for and goodness sake, let's you know, keep quiet about Christmas. I was, well, that's the thing, because I've never told my kids about that. No, no, not a word. All is well. My, all I'm is well. I'm not going to say what, but my, my kids have all got autism. Right. See if I was to tell them that and tell them that something was real that wasn't. Oh, there'd be, there'd be a nightmare. It's like the end of the world. Yeah. So with the Haggis story, it was quite funny, though, because I didn't realise how serious she was taking me. Oh, the wee so. And then later on, it's like, oh, oh. So there you go. Dinky do, uh, Mummy Paws. A joy to hear you. Too. We'll catch up yeah, soon. Too. You look, right. look after yourself, yeah, little angel. Bye. Regards to the kids. Ta da! Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. What a super lady. That's it. We are so busy tonight, guys. We've got two minutes left. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? It was a keel from Edinburgh. A keel from Edinburgh. How lovely to hear you, sir. Yes. One point, then I'm going to go. The COP26 summit in Glasgow, I heard initially Britain is going to come to Scotland and block the roads. Apparently so. I need to go to work. I need to provide for my family. Yes. And if they block me, I'll run them over with 100 miles per hour. Oh, no, Akil, we can't say that. You'll have to withdraw that remark. You won't actually. Well, I take it back. 
but we need to we do need we do need to be ready and we do need to take action but you, i know you'll certainly not do that we're working people we need to we need to get to work so we need to insulate yeah. to listen to the internet phone in and realize the scots need to get to work yes please yes do something uh, we don't like the shop. But we'll just say that Akil was only talking in some sort of metaphorical way. Yeah, it's just frustrating. You watch the news and you just you get, you get angry on this kind of issue. I know, I understand. I'm going to have to dash her out of time, dinky do. Dinky do, thank you. Dinky do, lot. That's it, folks. We are out of time.